the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome to this service. As we wait for the coming of our Saviour, we do with hope and joy and expectation. And particularly today, we remember the part of his mother Mary, God's chosen one. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here we stand at the Advent wreath with its four coloured candles. These candles stand for those who prepared for the coming of Jesus. What does this fourth candle on this fourth Saturday of Advent stand for? It stands for the Virgin Mary, full of grace. The angel told her she would be the mother of the Lord. Within her womb she carried Jesus, God's own Son. Let the candle be lit with joy. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of Blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Saviour of all. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
from the second book of Samuel. When, now, when King David was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind. The Lord is with you. That same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I was brought, I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the peoples of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. The refrain for Psalm 89 is, I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord of hosts, who is, as, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. The New Testament reading is from Romans, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings 
is made known to all Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to only the wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I used to have Chris Dingle services, I found it very difficult to prevent the children demolishing the Chris Dingles before they got home, let alone in church. The fruits of the the, uh, seasons were the most vulnerable. We are a generation that cannot wait. Very little patience, but everything at a great rate. Our pavements are dug up so we can get faster broadband. Who asked? We open our Christmas presents as they arrive. Indeed, for many people, Christmas is in full swing, whereas for Christians, we don't start until this afternoon. We demand instant access to everything. And although us Brits might still be quite good at queuing, the same cannot be said for our European neighbours. We cannot wait. And that sometimes brings us great trouble. We fall into debt because we can't be bothered to save. We do not notice that there are gentler and often better ways of not finding everything in a rush. We have forgotten the ways of stillness, of contemplation, of hope. I like the little rubric in this service that says, a time of silence and stillness for reflection, which actually means, hang on while the celebrant gets his mic in order. Serious now. One of the words associated with patience then is this word, hope. On many occasions, this is also mixed up with greed or pride or aggrandizement. It is not this generation alone that's lost its patience. You can see many instances in history. Sometimes a ruler may lose patience with a neighbor who has reneged on his promise. Sometimes the tax man cometh. But sometimes we wait, especially at this time of year, in hope that what we wish for may come true. And there is excitement in that waiting, even a sense in the surety that will happen. Hope is actually a positive word, especially in the religious sense. The people of Judah waited in hope. They had believed for a long time that they had a special relationship with God who they believed had created and still looked out for the world he had made. And the kings all descended from David, who was the embodiment of that relationship. He was the link between the people and God. He was the symbol of the special care God had made for them. The trouble was that for 500 years or so, the post of king had remained vacant. 
Yet the people still hope. Hope, as they've been told by the prophets, as Helen reminded us last week, that one of the Davidic line would again rule in Judea and that a relationship with God would be properly restored. Their hope was not an empty one. If God had spoken through the prophets, then so it would be. Even though the religious leaders of the day, although they preached the same, by their very lives and actions, cynically showed they hoped it wouldn't happen so they could continue to occupy the place of power. But of course, there were many ordinary people, poor, crushed, muted, who still hoped for this saviour, for this Messiah, one who would restore this relationship. They were not found among the powerful or the violent, though it did flicker here and there as Jesus was to discover. Where it was was among the ordinary folk, the folk who still held the secret in their hearts, the ones, most of the population, who were fairly ground down, owed little if anything, and were oppressed not only by their own leaders, but by the Roman masters who marched among them. And one of these people was a girl called Mary. Probably a very young girl, but already engaged to a man named Joseph. So Luke doesn't say very much about Joseph, except the telling clause that he was of the line of King David. So he gave Jesus at least that kind of legitimacy. Pages and pages have been written about how Mary came about, how was she pure enough to carry the Christ child. Some will lean upon that great, rather petty, fictional line of ancestors, not of the body, that was Joseph's line, but of the spiritual, with a line of people getting purer and purer and purer in their, their relationship to God until they got to Mary, who was perfect. Or that others say she was a one-off, a sort of quantum leap through which something new was created. Neither, I think, certainly on their own, is helpful. God, after all, can work with all kind of material, even with me, for my goodness. But Mary was a candidate because of the way she reacted to her calling. To some extent, Luke compares her reaction to that of old Zechariah who had been told his wife was to bear a son, incredulity, not willing to accept. But Mary is the model of humility and faith and obedience. Luke, more than any of the other evangelists, often underlines the faithfulness of women to God's call. Right in the first couple of pages we have Mary and Elizabeth and Anna. But Mary has the favour when she receives this extraordinary message. She was aware it was to do with hope. The hope should be held with all the people in their hearts for generations. God was still there. God was still active. God still loved his people. The Gospel of Luke then proceeds to show how God in Jesus had a far greater path than the scourging of the priestly class or just the Romans. He was not just here to make the lives of folk materially better off or to get human enemies off their backs. Look for a far wider perspective, just as Jesus gained a wider perspective as he grew in his life until he realised that he, not the nation, was the link with God. And how great a link, and how close to his father. He was constantly in touch with that father as he turned the who am I into I am. But his story on earth begins here. Christian hope is not that it might happen, but that it will happen. Indeed, has already begun, in a sense, with Mary's response to Gabriel. 
Christian people have membership, not just of a small ethnic group, but of the membership of God's whole family. It's quite an amazing thing if we really think about it, that God has come to us to sympathise with us, to align himself with us, and to restore us to our proper place. But all in good time, and all in good's, God's good way. Meanwhile, we wait. 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 And the waiting will make it all worthwhile, just in hope and patience. We wait. Abel, will you please stand? <clears throat> Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ to the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ let us pray to the Father. The response to Maranatha is, Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We pray for Christians around the world as we prepare to celebrate your coming at Christmas, Lord Jesus. Let the light of all Christians shine as a beacon to the lost and help them to find their way back to you. We praise you for the gift of your salvation freely given to all who believe on the name of Jesus. We thank you for choosing Mary to be the mother of Jesus. And we thank you that you have not left your world but remain close to us until the very end of the age. Maranatha, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. We pray for those places in our world where Christians struggle through natural disaster, conflict, war, or persecution for their faith. We remember particularly this morning Ukraine, Egypt, Gaza, and in a moment of quiet, we remember other places known to us. We pray for your creation across the world and for each living thing that you have made. We ask for restoration, for the work of your hands. Help us to tend your creation and I pray that you would guide and guard the ongoing decisions around climate change as we move into 2024. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. We pray for healing health and wholeness for all those in our church community and beyond. We lift ill Christians across the world to you in our hearts this morning and ask you to heal them through their faith in you. We also pray locally for Dorothy, Veronica, Anne, Catherine, Pam, Denise and Louise. 
We remember them as needing your healing touch today. And we ask for it to be blessed to them in Jesus' name. We also remember those who have passed recently or whose year's mind falls at this time of year. And we remember Janet, Shirley, Cynthia, Alan, Helen, and Sheila. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. We pray for our churches together in Broadstone as we celebrate the Christmas season together. We pray that we would hold the true meaning of Christmas in our hearts and share the gospel with others around us as hearts search for you, particularly at this time of year. We ask that you would protect and strengthen all those in our local church community, blessing each person and drawing them closer to you across the Christmas period. We also remember those who might be spending Christmas alone tomorrow or who might be grieving the loss of a loved one at this time. We pray that you would shower them in your presence, love and comfort. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And we just pray for a few moments in our hearts about all the things which God has placed on our, on our hearts and minds this week. Let us draw close to God in the stillness, discern his voice, and feel his comfort. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom, on earth as in heaven, where you reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that Christmas peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to spell for us the way of salvation. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets, whom the Virgin Mary b bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald, and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ lift, fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth, so that when he comes, he may find us watching in prayer our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament Covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, <clears throat> we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great high priest, 
this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Sing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Heavenly Father, who chose the blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few Christmas notices. Uh, firstly, once again, thank you to Adrian Jones for playing as our organist today. It's always fabulous to have you here, so thank you. And you have a wonderful Christmas. I know you've quite a few gigs to do between now and tomorrow, haven't you? So bless you for coming here. Um, Paul said that uh, we, we move to Christmas this afternoon. We might move to Christmas at 11 o'clock this morning <laughs> because after uh, tea and coffee and, and some special biscuits in, in um, Northreach after this service, at 11 a.m., we're having a community carol sing-along just for half an hour. So come and join us for that. It's out on the church lawn, providing it's not raining, and I think the rain is due to hold off. So we'll have a lovely little half-hour uh, community carol sing out there. Please do join us. At three o'clock this afternoon, uh, we have our crib service, our Chris Dingles at the crib. It is not called the donkey service. <laughs> Remember, it's the baby Jesus service. But I do have two live donkeys coming, which I'm very excited about, as you know. <laughs> but it's not the donkey service. <laughs> they can't trump Jesus on Christmas Eve. Um, and then at half past 11 this evening, of course, we have our midnight mass, a very special first Eucharist of Christmas. Do join us for that if you're able to. It's usually uh, quite magical and special, a lovely service. And then tomorrow we have two services, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Christmas Day. Well done for remembering the time of service this morning. And if uh, some of you are, obviously, I will see again over today and tomorrow. Um, if you're now sort of disappearing off to be with relatives and friends or starting your Christmas journeys, first of all, safe travels. Secondly, have a wonderful time with whoever you're spending Christmas with. And I think it's okay, half past ten on Christmas Eve, to move from Advent and wish you a very happy Christmas. Oh, it's me. I always forget this bit. It's the acclamation. Let's stand for our final Advent acclamation. With love and compassion, come, Lord Jesus. With judgment and mercy, come, Lord Jesus. In power and glory, come, Lord Jesus. In wisdom and truth, come, Lord Jesus. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to welcome him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
And so, my sisters and my brothers, as we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.